Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're taking a look at one of my favorite film emulation softwares on the market today, and that is Film Pack 7 from DxO. Now, what's really cool is we're going to be giving away a license to Film Pack 7 along with some other DxO software later on in the month of August 2025. If you want to enter in for that giveaway completely for free, you can do so by going down to the description box and clicking the link and entering your information for this giveaway. Now, in order to win, you do have to be subscribed to this channel. It's really simple and super free to do. So just go ahead and do that and it'll be great. Now, in the event that you don't win, but you still want to purchase this particular program, you can do so by using the link in the description box below. It is an affiliate link. I do make a commission from anyone who uses it, but it's at no extra cost to you. And also, if you are new to purchasing the Film Pack collection or Film Pack uh, software, then you can use my coupon code, which is also in the description box below, and that'll save you some money, and that's a win-win. Again, I do make a commission, but it's at no extra cost to you. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Chris, what the heck is Film Pack 7? As I mentioned, it is a film emulation software that you're looking at right here in the background. And I think that this is one of the best on the market today. So think old school film simulations or emulations and you want to apply that over your digital images. We know that Fujifilm has their own digital stocks and things of that sort that they like to apply to images and people swear by them and they use these uh, JPEG files straight out of the Fuji cameras and people love them. Not No shade to Fuji, but what if you need to shoot raw so you can recover data but you still want to get those looks. Well, that's where a software like this comes into play. The cool thing about Film Pack 7 is you can use raw images to apply your film simulations. And Film Pack comes with uh, over 200 film simulations. So you have a lot to choose from based off of your own personal style and choice. And of course, if you like one, you can right click on it and you can hit add to favorites. So you'll always keep the ones that you enjoy using the most up towards the top. So where does this fit into your workflow? Well, because Film Pack allows you to work with raw images, I recommend that you take a raw image, throw it in here, get the look that you want. And we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. And then when you're ready, export it as a TIFF and send that into your editing software of choice, be it Photoshop, Lightroom, On One Photo Raw, which is my personal favorite, Luminar Neo, or wherever you want to go. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do inside of Film Pack. Now, my favorite way of getting started in Film Pack 7 is to click the compare here. So if I come up here to the top and I go to the third icon all over here, I can get a side by side view of the images being compared. Now, at the moment, there's absolutely nothing happening to the image. But the reason I like to do this and I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit is on the right. As soon as I click one of these presets, because I am in the preset section, as soon as I click on one of these presets, so we'll go with Kodak Kodachrome 64, you'll notice what changes or that I get a change over here on the left. Now, I get the reason I like to work this way is I can see what the original raw image looked like and then what the preset is doing. And if you don't want to work with presets, you can absolutely I'll just click this again to take the preset off of the image. I could come over here to customize and I can literally work through a myriad of tools that are available to me to really get the film emulation that I want. But because I'm not a film genius and, you know, many of you may not be either if you're anything like me, then it's a lot easier to just use one of these presets. So let's go with Kodak 
Elite Extra Color 100. So when I click that, you can see what happens to the image. And it looks pretty similar to the original photo here. So I kind of like that idea, but it's a little bit brighter. The blues are a little bit more uh, pastel-y, if that's even a word. Don't think it is, but I'm going to go with it anyway today. With that being said, once you have a preset that you like, then you can come over to customize and really fine tune this. So just like all photo editing applications, you get a sequence of events or a sequence of adjustments that you can make. So starting from the top, think of the film as the foundation of just getting your camera profile the way that you want in a typical photo editing software. You have your rendering, so that's going to be that film stock. And based off of how much of that film stock I want, I can either pull down and kind of fade it in less, or I can say, you know what, I want to go crazy overboard. Let's pull that all the way up. And it's probably negligible to see through the YouTube compression, but I know that when I turn it off and turn it on, hopefully it's coming through a little bit better. Then, of course, you can apply grain and grain is exactly what you would imagine it to be. It's just applying grain to your image. All right. So now that I have all of that out of the way, the next thing that I can do is come down here into the development and think of this as your develop settings in any other photo editing application as if you were editing a raw file. You have all of the usual tools, so exposure, highlights, midtones, shadows, and blacks. And then, of course, you can modify saturation and vibrancy. You can then come down to something that's unique, at least to in my understanding, to Film Pack is you can modify the light in the image using a luminosity mask. But what's really cool about this luminosity mask, let me open that back up. If I activate it and I hit plus, and let's just make this go a little bit larger. There we go. When I have a luminosity mask added in here, you got to hit plus to add that in. I get this zone system. Now, this is a system that was created by Anzel Adams many, many years ago, uh, many moons before I was born. Um, at least I think. I don't know. Anyway, the zone system here is a very, very uh, finite way of selecting the range of light in your image. Case in point, if I want to select this shadow area right here, I'll just click on number two and see if that does anything for me. And that actually selected that area. And you can just cycle through these. For some reason, I got to double click them. Not sure why that's happening. But it'll select different portions of the photo. And then of course, if you want to feather that or, you know, adjust it just a bit, then I can say, well, I want a little bit more in the shadow area. So I can break this apart by clicking and dragging on this little node here. And then maybe I want to feather it a little bit further. So then I'd grab this node at the bottom and I feather it out. So now that I think the mask is where it ought to be, I can turn off the mask by coming down here to where it says show mask. And so I'm not looking at that the whole time. And what's really cool is now you can do all of your localized adjustments using luminosity across the entire image. So this is really cool because let's say I want to actually make those shadows a little bit deeper so I can pull down on my shadows here and now I'm getting even more contrast in the overall image. I spend a lot of time playing around with these film emulations because I think that it's fun and it's creative and I get looks that I would not get otherwise using um, other software or at least not as simple as I can using Film Pack 7. So I'll go ahead and close that down because no need to continue working with that. And I'm just going to apply this so that way we can close out our masking options here. Then 
you know, we got contrast and all these other things. I'm not going to go through every single aspect here, but you do get some creative effects. So if I fast forward and jump down here to the frame, you can throw in whatever kind of frame. So, you know, I've never found a need to do anything like this. I feel like these are a little gimmicky. That's just me personally. But, you know, you may find a need to throw something in here or one of these frames on. But typically, whenever I throw a frame on, it would probably be just a, a pure white frame. Now, again, I like to use other software to do my special effects like that. So I probably wouldn't even touch this area. But it's nice to know that these items are here. And I guess while I'm here in the graphical effects, if you have Photo Lab 8, which is DxO's raw editor, if you have that and you purchase Film Pack 7 and they're both installed, you will be able to use the tools that are located here inside of Film Pack 7 directly inside of Photo Lab 8. That's really cool, and it's a super handy feature because, you know, when the company makes both softwares, it's easy for them to integrate both of them in a way that is value added to the user. And I've done that in the past, but today I'm working with this as a standalone. And so that's why you're seeing it in the way that you are. So once you are completely done with the image overall, what you can do is come up here to the upper left and you can hit save. And you gotta be careful not to hit the save settings as preset. Instead, you wanna just hit the save icon here. And this is gonna bring up your dialog box for wherever you want to save an image. Now, in this little drop down area, you can choose to save it as a TIFF. My recommendation, and if you have the storage on your computer or your hard drive, always save as a TIFF. It's going to restore more information or hold more information. So when you get to editing inside of your preferred photo editor, you will have more information to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and select TIFF. And then I'm just going to put at the beginning here, I like to just put FL. Um, or I'm sorry, FP, not F FL, FP7, and then dash, just like so. So that way I know that I've edited this with Film Pack 7, and then I just hit save, and I get to choose what I want. Again, since I chose TIFF, I'm going to go with a 16-bit because I want the best quality saved to my hard drive, and then I hit save, and it's all done. Now, or I, I mean, I guess it is rendering, not that it's all done. I'm done, the computer's working. Anyhow, once this is done rendering, then you can load that TIFF file into your photo editor of choice and continue working with it further. If you got questions about Film Pack 7, leave them down in the comment section below. I will be more than happy to answer what questions I can about this software. If you want to enter in to win this particular software, consider signing up for the giveaway down in the description box below. You'll find that link. Click that, fill out the form, and then make sure you hit the subscribe button because if you're not subscribed, you cannot win this license. So with that being said, until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.